Hello and welcome again to our weekly devotional um, from the Burning Word. Uh, so we look into the Bible every week. We seek uh, God's wisdom and counsel for our lives. And I'm just uh, if you're the first time that you tune in into our program, uh, welcome. And I I just want to encourage you to to stay in the Word of God. I just want to encourage you to subscribe um, or even. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, just, I I encourage you to seek uh, the Lord through His Word uh, from whichever uh, podcast. But uh, just make sure that um, uh, that preaching, that teaching, is grounded in the Word of God. That's the most important part uh, for when you are seeking uh, a teaching from a podcast or even from YouTube. Make sure that it's grounded in the Word of God. Even when you look for a church, make sure that it's um, a Bible-based um, church uh, because it's the most important part. It's, it's, it's more stable. Uh, the Word of God says that His Word is settled in heaven forever. So it is important for us to, when we're looking for that point of influence, when someone is teaching you about the Word of God, either in a church, a small group, or even a podcast, that you seek for someone or a church or a group that really they love the Word of God and they and their teaching is based in the Word of God. And as we mentioned before, um, we're looking into Psalm 119. What a beautiful psalm, right? It's like a, if God wanted to make a comment about His own Word, then it seems like a, He inspired the psalmist to write Psalm 119. This psalm is by far the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119 is longer than several books in the Bible. It's about 32 books. This chapter, Psalm 119, is longer than about 32 books in the Bible. This is just amazing. And it says, um, this psalm has been written in testimony to the sufficiency of the ministry of the Word of God to sustain the believer. You, myself, through every situation in life, every situation that you can think of, the Lord can sustain you through His Word. And today we continue with the third stanza, Gamal, and we're going to dive into the Word of God, Psalm 119, verses 19 to 21. It says this, I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is crushed with longing after your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the arrogant, the curse, who wander from your commandments. Hmm. The Hebrews were no stranger to being aliens in another land, as it happened before. As you probably know, they were uh, living in Egypt for about 400 years and then Babylon for another 70 or so years. But now, in his own country, the psalmist says that he's a stranger in the earth. We need to be reminded of this. We are aliens. We don't belong here. For uh, the first book of Chronicles, uh, chapter 29, verse 15, it says, For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Also, Psalm, um, Psalm, sorry, Psalm chapter 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. And that means we are to observe the laws of this world. And for that, we need God's handbook for the duration of our residence in, in God's world, right? Every one of us are inclined to lose our way without the guidance contained in his handbook, the Bible. And most probably, the majority of us can remember a time when we lost our way because we were not seeking the guidance in his book. Or perhaps because we decided to apply a shortcut or just simply ignore it. There is no wonder that, uh, that in every age, we all ask these great questions. 
Who sent me into this earth? Why am I he? Where am I going? This is perhaps because we deep inside we know we are only in a journey through the earth. And we know that God's truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only answer to these existential questions. For those that believe this life has no eternal significance, one of their biggest concerns is to spend their days the easiest way possible, to enjoy life, to make the most of it, because for them, there is no other life. And if things don't go according to the plan, well, that's when all the drama starts, right? There is no hope, and as we all get older, there is a voice that echoes from inside asking the same questions. Why am I here? If you are trying to follow Christ, the world will treat you as a stranger. Even if you are showing some interest in the Bible or in God, people will ask you, what, what are you doing, right? So, the world will treat you as a stranger, for that is what you are. Today, more than ever, we live in a world where those who really believe in the Lord and follow Him know that they don't belong here. When we see the corruption, the injustice, and all sorts of evil, we know we are strangers in this world. Multiple times in the handbook, the Bible, the Lord tells us, Do not be conformed to this world and its patterns. Don't get comfortable here. Your citizenship is in heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Remember that he says that? What a wonderful hope we have in Jesus. Verse 19, he says, Do not hide your commandments from me. A synonym of hiding is concealing And the Lord Jesus spoke about this subject in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 25, when he says, At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden this, you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. So in few words, it seems We have a map to navigate through around the earth where we are strangers, which seem to be concealed. It's a concealed map, right? The information is concealed. This reminds me of a movie yeah, which came out just a few years ago already called The Hobbit. Probably you, you watched that movie too. They also had a map, but a great part of it was concealed and needed a person with special skills and the correct type of light to be able to unveil the information and produce the desired interpretation because they had, a, they had a destiny to go, right? We do, we also need this map so desperately and we need the interpretation and the light to reveal what once was concealed and that we can understand it. It is a good thing that we know who produces the light and the interpretation And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? So we know we need this light. We need the interpretation. Are you seeking that light? Are you, are you seeking uh, the one that produces the interpretation for you? Because otherwise, it's, a, it's just like a, you are walking in the dark. So you need the, the light of the Lord to guide you. To be at a strange place um, and not being able to see will be like uh, to be in the middle of the sea without a compass to guide you or like to be in a desert without a guide or like uh, to be in an enemy's country without a friend in each case our dependence is upon the Lord alone we need his light to unfold his direction and destiny to know what's expected from us right and to see the dangers that will be found along the way in this strange world. And how many dangers can we find, right? So many. So many places where we can trip, right? So many situations where we can 
make decisions that we're going to regret for the rest of our lives, right? So we need his light. We need his guidance. We need him to hold us in with his hand. Because as long as I'm with him, his presence is with me, and he's holding me with his hand, I feel so secure. That's all what I need. So verse 20 on Psalm 118, it says, My soul is crushed with longing after your ordinances at all times. Perhaps we can better understand this verse by considering a deer that has for many hours been fleeing from its hunters till it's in total exhaustion and is ready to faint with fatigue. Let us suppose that its fears are raised to the limit by the rapid advance of its enemies, ready to seize and to tear it in pieces. How intense must be its thirst? How glad would it be to pause uh, for a few moments at a water stream, to revive for a little while, and to renovate its strength to continue running? In this line, the word longing shows the passion in the heart of the psalmist for the word of God. The truth is that no matter how much we know and apply God's word, there's still so much more to learn and to live. Because it's not only about learning, you have to live the word of God, right? Otherwise, we are just hypocrites. In fact, the more we understand, we realize how little we really grasp of, of it. It is a dangerous spiritual state to be in. When we are content with where we are spiritually and what we know biblically, as well as what we apply personally. It's just a danger to be content with our achievements. We have to extend to the future, right? We have to uh, extend our lives to fully know the Lord Jesus Christ. The passion that we see in these lines is that we should all long for in our own spiritual lives. In other words, as we meditate this psalm, this praise should be our praise. His longing for the word of God should be our longing for the world. Uh, psalm 63, verse 1, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Also, Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, probably you know this. It says, As the deep pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? It is rather regrettable how little these expressions represent the spiritual desires of most who call themselves Christians today. We are gladly entertained by the distractions of this world. We can be three hours in the cinema or in front of a TV, right? But, you know, half an hour preaching is just too boring, you know? Rather than wanting and longing for more of God's Word, many, if not most believers, want less. To the point where in some, some places in the world, they've been reducing the preaching time up to 10 minutes. And many pastors around the world are just happy to accommodate their lack of spiritual desire for God's word. We are talking about this psalmist who most probably knew more than anyone in his day about the word of God. And still he longs for the word of God in his life. That talks to us about having a humble heart. Psalm, Psalm 138, verse 6 says, For though the Lord is exalted, yet he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. As someone said, Humility makes men angels. Pride makes angels devils. And that brings us to verse 21. It says, You rebuke the arrogant, the curse, who wander from your commandments. Wow, strong words, right? Those who astray from God's commandments are both proud and arrogant. Their disobedience is evident. 
evidence of being delivered and cursed. So no good can come, come from their disobedience. Perhaps this verse is the result of not having the longing for the word of God. So the word gets neglected. And so the proud easily wander from the way they should follow. The handbook, the Bible containing the map is not good enough for them as they know better. And then they fall into the traps, right? It's common to hear people having their heart broken. Right? Isn't it beautiful to have a broken soul? A soul broken before the Lord that cries out for his presence and revelation? In these verses, we see the dangers of living as a stranger in the land. We see our own weakness and instability. We see the dangers of pride. And it's not a nice picture. However, even in the midst of a bad place, we can have the confidence that God's word can revive us, guide us, and give us a strength we, con we need to continue. God's word is so powerful in the hearts of his people that in spite of the many afflictions and stressful situations they face, we face, it is able to preserve them with divine purity and peace. As we meditate upon and follow his word, his handbook, the Bible, help us to overcome every trial and situation, all for the glory of God's name. May the Lord bless you, and we'll be back in a week time when we continue with the third stanza. Gamal. God bless you. <laughs>